Hello all you beautiful people out there, what is going on? This is your friend Birdie, coming at you fast with a Borderlands 2 guide, and today we are going to be talking about how to kill Hammerax the Invincible. Now, this dude is the new raid boss in the newly released DLC for Borderlands 2, the Lilith DLC, and I wanted to show you guys the easiest way how to beat him. Now, there's multiple ways, and I'm actually going to talk about all those different ways, but I'm going to show you the way that I did it here, and I basically did it first try. So I'm just going to show you my Gunzerker build. I'm at level 50 right now. I'm normally playing on my level 72 OP8 on my PS4, but I'm on PC right now, so I'm only level 50. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not going to be the super highest level, but it's going to serve the same purpose. Now, what you're going to want to do, and I got really, really lucky as I progressed through the, the DLC campaign, you want to try your very best to get three items that are just going to make really, really, really easy. This is the best way to do it. There are other ways to work around it, however, that I will t explain while showing you guys the gameplay. Now, the first thing you want here is the toothpick. Okay, this is an assault rifle. It is the one that I'm holding right here, rainbow rarity. And the thing about this is that it shoots two rows. So it reminds me a lot of the double uh, uh, penetrating unkept herald. And if you burst in, you shoot really, really fast and just deal very very large amount of dps okay so this is a very very strong weapon on its own another thing that you want to have is the shield called the retainer all right the most important thing about this is when you're in writhing deep which is the zone where you can find the raid boss and you have the toothpick in your hands your movement speed and your jumping is greatly increased it's like having zero gravity as you guys are going to see in the gameplay and it helps you get from point to point around the arena which is going to be really really important as i'm going to show you here and the third item here is mouthwash, okay? It's going to be this relic. You guys notice the trend here, the pattern here. And it's going to increase your assault rifle damage, and it's going to increase toothpick damage specifically. It's going to make your toothpick do way, way, way more damage. So these are very, very important items. As for your other items, honestly, you don't even really need anything super specific. I have the slagger here because I want to slag the monster, but you're going to be doing the majority of the damage with the toothpick with this build. If you have grog nozzle, then you're 100% good to go. I don't have the grog nozzle yet, so I had to use the slagger, which I think is the next best, next best thing. But here's the loadout. And also, I have a mod on that increases my money shot skill. Also, that's just a really good... Uh, rule of thumb is to have as many points into money shot as possible i'm actually still upgrading it as we speak so it's not maxed out but whenever you're soloing raid bosses as salvador this is going to be your most important perk all right so now let's get into the game plan i'm going to explain more how to defeat this seemingly really annoying invincible when in fact he's probably one of the easiest ones once you learn how to actually beat him now, before we get into the raid boss battle, I just wanted to show you the difference in movement speed when you're carrying the toothpick and have the retainer shield on and the difference when you don't have the toothpick in your hands. As you can see here, I'm running normally, jumping normally, but with the toothpick, I'm running super speed like Sanic and jumping 0G like this is the pre-sequel. Now, I had a little bit of loot left over from the last time I killed this boss, so I decided to save and quit and refresh the game, and now we're going to get into the gameplay. Now, you're going to notice that unlike my previous Borderlands 2 raid boss videos, this run isn't going to be the cleanest. And I did that kind of on accident and kind of on purpose. I could have went back and got on a cleaner run, but I kind of wanted to show you guys the struggles of doing it, especially if it's your first time doing it, and showing you all the different scenarios. So what you want to do is you want to wither him down a little bit. Uh, because at a certain point, once he hits a certain point with his health, he's going to start regenerating his health as he slithers around the map. As you notice, he's coming out of these wells. There are four wells that he pops out of. And you can shoot him, and that's fine and dandy, but he's going to out-heal you if you keep shooting him like this. So he has four wells that he jumps out of, and he jumps into another one when he does that attack. And then he pops out of a different one and repeats the process until he gets to that point with his health where he starts regenerating it. What you want to do is you kind of want to guess, but wait, you don't have to guess where he's going to pop out from because there is a system. There are four wells. He's not going to pop out of the well that he just left, and he's not going to pop out of the well that he just dove into. So that leaves two of them. The, the way you know which well he's going to pop out of is because the well that's right next to the one that he dove into is the next one where he's going to pop out from. So notice I, I saw him pop out into that corner. I'm going to stand next to the well that's next to it and he's going to pop out of it. So he jumped into that well. Where's the closest well to it on the same side? Okay, maybe it's this one. Is it? I don't know. I guess it is. Boom. And you're going to aim for that bright glowing thing on the back of his head. When you do enough damage to it, he's going to fall down just like that. And I kind of got stuck on his back, but there's going to be a crit spot in his mouth that lets you deal a ton of damage as you guys just saw. 
Now, because I did get stuck on his back, I couldn't one-wave him, as I like to call him, but we are going to see his health regeneration come into effect. So now he's going to dive around, slither around, and while he slithers around, he's going to regenerate health. He jumps out of the same exact spots every single time. So, if you follow my video here, you'll know exactly where to anticipate him. He jumps out of four spots, first out of the ground, next he slithers across the ground, third he gets up high and slithers from that top hole, and he either goes into another hole up above or he'll flop down into the middle like that and the last one he's gonna do the same thing except on the other side of the arena right here so as long as you anticipate it you can deal enough damage to him to prevent him from regenerating too much health because he is gonna regenerate a lot of health now you do it again basically and you just, again, guess where he's going to jump out from, stand right in the middle, jump right before he pops out, and you're going to have a great view at the back of his head unless you get caught by some random ads, and then you won't be able to do it, but then you do it a second time and you'll be good to go. Now, try not to kill the ads, because if you do go down, like I probably, I think I go down here in a second, uh, you do take damage from this attack, so you do have to have a, a good amount of shield up, but uh, if you have ads around, you can easily kill them with the toothpick. And yeah. Now, if you don't have the toothpick and the other items that I mentioned, you can also use weapons like the conference call or any other fire weapon that deals a lot of damage. The reason the conference call is good is because it also shoots sideways and it can reach the back of his head very easily. So you don't actually even need to jump up with him to get a good view at the back of his head. You just need to do a lot of damage into his mouth area and have the conference call hit the back of his head from the sides. That's also another good strategy. Of course, have artifacts that increase fire damage, and you should be able to easily one-wave him. Again, the reason I couldn't one-wave him in, in, in this gameplay is because I got stuck on the back of his head. So you kind of want to just learn the body movement, learn the body language of this boss. And honestly, he's really, really easy at that point. Just don't get hit too much by the ads. Predict where he's going to go. And as you saw, the toothpick mixed with the retainer makes it really easy to traverse this arena to get to those spots where you can hit him in the back of the head. And he drops a lot of great loot. I'm really happy with the amount of loot that he drops. He drops a lot of legendaries. I've heard that he also drops rainbow rarities sometimes, but the great thing about this is it's kind of like a treasure room because once you go back up to the middle of the arena, there's going to be four rainbow chests and Every time I killed him, I got at least one rainbow rarity. It was the easy mode shield, which will help you in Digistruct Peak. But you can also get other rainbow rarity weapons and items in these chests. Plus, you'll get a lot of legendaries as well as you can see here. So, guys, I know I don't do too many Borderlands 2 guides. I know it's not normal for my channel, but I beat this Invincible pretty early on in the lifespan of this DLC, and I thought these tips could be helpful to everyone else. If you did find it helpful or useful or enjoyable or funny even, please drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that good, good stuff. And as always, make sure you'll have a wonderful day. Peace.